Our next guest is a teacher and journalist who was researching her grandfather when she uncovered his Nazi past. Sylvia Foti penned a powerful book, the, Grand, the Nazi's Granddaughter, which has now become the basis for J'accuse, a documentary about the Holocaust in Lithuania. Sylvia joins us now. Sylvia, thanks for coming on Outside. It's great to have you here. Now, what an amazing book. It's such a great story. Tell us, you, you, you promised your mum that you would write about your grandfather, a Lithuanian hero who supposedly fought the Nazis. Tell us what happened next. Uh, he fought the communists. He was a big hero because he fought so bravely against the communists. Um, and he died for his country uh, in 1947 in a KGB prison uh, and he, where he was tortured because he tried to round up the partisans to fight against the communists. And uh, in 1941, he led a rebellion against the communists in a part of the country. And of course, they won this rebellion. And the, but then that's when the Nazis came in. So anyway, all my life, I grew up in Chicago, and I only knew that my grandfather was this wonderful World War II hero. I had been a journalist, and uh, in the year 2000, my mom was dying. Uh, she was only 60 years old, and on her deathbed, uh, she said, Sylvia, you have to write the book. And so, of course, when your mom asks you something on her deathbed, you can only give her one answer. Of course, I said yes. And um, I thought I was going to write a wonderful story about what a great, magnificent hero my grandfather was because he fought so bravely against the communists. Well, uh, lo and behold, a few months later, I started to come across some really, really uh, dark information about him uh, until I discovered that he had actually played a role uh, in killing Jews in Lithuania. And when I had grown up in Chicago, I didn't even know uh, that there was a Holocaust in Lithuania. Of course, I grew up in the United States, and I knew about the Holocaust, you know, in Poland and Germany and Austria. But uh, I had been going to Lithuanian school on Saturdays. I was raised very Lithuanian in our Lithuanian community. And they never once really talked about the Holocaust. Um, when I started digging into it, what I was starting to learn is that Lithuanians were only saying that it was all the Nazis, that only the Nazis were the ones responsible for killing Jews. And it's true. They gave the orders. Um, but, but what my research has discovered is that um, Lithuanians enthusiastically participated mm. also in killing uh, Jews. And my grandfather, uh, unfortunately, was one of them. So this is now being turned into a movie as well, and the movie's screening around Australia. How, how did that make you feel to realise, hang on, you've completely got the story of your grandfather is not, he is not the hero you'd been brought up to believe he was? Uh, it was devastating. My whole identity was that my grandfather was this magnificent hero. I, I emulated him. I looked up to him. He was a big presence in our home. I never met him, but my mom always talked to him, my grandmother. His wife always talked to him, about him. So I literally felt like he was sort of, you know, a member of the family that, that had a, a, quite a big presence in my life. So when I, uh, at first when I heard this, I was in denial. Mm. I, could, I couldn't accept it. Um, and I was told that it was just communist propaganda, that, that uh, you know, Lithuania got its independence and the communists were just making up these horrible stories about... Lithuanians to kind of degrade the country. Um, and that's what I started to believe too, because that's what all Lithuanians believed and that's what all Lithuanians told me. And so um, it took me about 10 years to get over the denial of it. So to me, it's more of a psychological story, at least for Lithuanians, than it is a historical story, because that denial is just so strong and so entrenched and it's still there today, it's still very strong today. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to ask you about. I mean, you know, obviously this is a story that would have been repeated silently across many, many Lithuanian families. You know, you'd be the one who dug into the archives and looked into it and found out the history. Since this, um, these revelations have come out, has this led to a broader, I guess you'd say, historical reckoning within Lithuania to say, you know, maybe the story we'd been told more broadly about 
the country's actions during the war um, might be different than, you know, we had been led to believe. And how, how does that affect a country like Lithuania, which is, of course, a small country? You know, it has the Russian bear right behind it. Um, you know, what, what is this, the psycho psychology playing out you know, among the broader community of the country? Tell us about that. Unfortunately, uh, they don't want to face this. Uh, unfortunately, they're still uh, holding on to the idea that it was all only the Nazis and that Lithuanians really did not play a role, that Lithuanians themselves were a victim. So um, they have not come to terms with this. Uh, there has still not been a reckoning with this. Um, and this is, uh, for me, heartbreaking. And of course, for the Jews, the 220,000 victims who were murdered in Lithuania, uh, of course, is heartbreaking, but the, you know there were many witnesses to say that unfortunately many Lithuanians took a horrible role in this, and um, I'm hoping that my book will uh, help the country begin to face it. Liz, yeah, is that the main aim? Because so you set out writing this thinking you were going to write about a hero. Mm -hmm. There must have been a point once the realization set in that you were like, "Do I keep going with this?" Was there a hesitation there, or was it the hope of being a catalyst for said reckoning that made you decide, "No, I'm I'm still writing this. It's actually now more important than ever." Yeah, um, for a long time, I I kept telling myself. I don't need to write this. I really shouldn't. Uh, I kept trying to put the manuscript down, but you know, I had this promise to my mom to write the book, and I finally had to tell myself it's not the book my mom would have written. But um, I decided to go forward. You know, for for a long time, I thought nobody would read the book. I knew Lithuanians would hate it. I didn't think the Jews would like it. I and I, I was just telling myself I'm going to write the book because it was a promise to mom. But it had sort of snowballed into this big project, and a lot of people now are getting involved in it. And now there's this movie, The Jacques. And at the, I'm at the point now where um, I'm hoping that it will lead to re reconciliation between Lithuanians and Jews, because that still has not happened. Right. And you mentioned, so your, your grandfather murdered basically 2,000 Jews around that. He uh, was in charge of three cities in Lithuania, uh, Plunge, Telshe, and Shaule. And really, under his watch, 14,500 Jews had been murdered. So it was like 2,000 in Plunge, and then um, like 4,000 in Shaule, and then many, many more in Telshe. Um, he was the uh, district chair, kind of like the governor of the second largest region in Lithuania. And he, as governor, he had to sign a lot of documents. And of those thousand that he signed, about 70 had to do with the Holocaust. And of those 70, one is the most damaging, where he asked to round up 2,000 Jews in that Shole region, Jews and half-Jews, and send them all to a ghetto called Jagare, where he wanted them um, sent. And within six weeks, they were all murdered. Oh, God. Sylvia, you're incredibly brave, and um, what, a, what a great story. So there's a movie now, Jacuz, which is screening around Australia. Uh, look up for that online. We'll put, this, put it up on the screen as well. Uh, fantastic work, incredibly brave woman for facing, facing all that and doing all that work. That's, a, that's an amazing story. Sylvia, thanks so much for coming on Outsiders, and thank you for this magnificent book, which I can't wait to read. Thanks thank so you much. so much for having me. Our pleasure.